So we've dealt with the discrete energy uh, part of um, subtopic 7.1. We're now going to look at the uh, ideas behind radioactive decay. Before we do, need to just uh, clarify a couple of things. Uh, we already know that um, a nucleus contains protons and neutrons and electrons surround the nucleus. Um, but we now need to look at um, some particular quantities to just to make uh, nuclear physics a little bit more easy to understand. So for a given um, element, um, it has a certain number of uh, a certain number of protons. So for example, um, if we think about carbon, it has um, six protons, oxygen has eight, um, and so that never changes. Um, that number of protons uh, is known as the atomic number, and that has a symbol uh, Z, capital Z. Um, but it, the so while the element all atoms of the same element all have that same number of protons, um, they may have um, may have differing differing numbers of neutrons. Now, um, the symbol that we use for number of neutrons, sometimes just referred to as the neutron number, uh, is capital N. Uh, that then leads to, um, gives a, a differing, um, differing mass numbers. Now, the mass number um, is otherwise known as the um, nucleon number, given that we already know that uh, protons and neutrons are collectively known as nucleons. Um, the unfortunate thing here is that the mass number is uh, given by the, the letter A, so it's a little bit counterintuitive. So atomic number is not A, atomic number is Z. Uh, so just something to be aware of there. Um, now the mass number is simply then just the, the sum of the, the atomic number and the neutron number. So that's a, a pretty easy one to rec recall. Um, isotopes of the same element, um, so this is a, a term that we need to be familiar with. Um, so isotopes of an element uh, will all have the same Z value, uh, but different uh, A values. So when we're talking about um, uh, isotopes, we're basically saying it's the same element, um, but it has um, different uh, mass numbers. Now, if we're going to um, represent isotopes, um, we use a certain notation, and that notation um, is, I'll show you right now, um, uses the two letters A and Z. So we've got A at the top being the mass number, Z at the bottom being the um, the atomic number, and then we have the element itself. So uh, X is the uh, chemical element symbol. So as an example, I mentioned carbon earlier. Uh, we could have, uh, or we do in fact have uh, isotopes of carbon that are uh, 12,6C. So that would be known as carbon 12. So we don't need to state the 6 in the name here because if we're say, stating 6 we're very clearly identifying that it's carbon, uh, but we do need to state the mass number to state um, which isotope it is, so carbon 6, um, and so we know then that that has 6 protons, 6 neutrons. And so another isotope might be carbon 13, so 13, 6, um, so that would be carbon 13. Um, and then, so that would be um, the same again, six protons, but now seven neutrons. And final example, uh, we'll do carbon-14, um, in which case um, it would have six and eight. So that's the notation that we're going to be using. Um, that is the, the convention for representing different isotopes. Um, and so uh, we'll continue using that um, as we go through. Now, if we look at isotopes, um, differing numbers of neutrons uh, means that um, we're going to have a, um, we need to sort of think about what these neutrons are there for. Um, so the presence of neutrons, uh, sort of a, a twofold presence, I guess, a twofold reason, I guess. 
Um, so the presence of neutrons, um, first of all, um, moderates the uh, electrostatic repulsion between the protons. So protons all being positively charged, that means that if you've got a whole lot of them in a nucleus, um, then we're going to see some forces that are trying to push the uh, protons apart. Uh, but on top of that, we have the strong nuclear force that holds protons and neutrons together. Now, the strong nuclear force is a very short uh, acting force, so uh, hence why it's called the strong nuclear force. Um, it only occurs over distances that you would find in the nucleus. Um, so the strong nuclear force acts on both um, protons and neutrons to bind them together. So if you think about um, the idea of a neutron then, you can sort of, it's kind of, uh, and not too bad a way to think of it, uh, as sort of a nuclear glue. Uh, so if you've got, um, if you've got enough uh, electrons there, it'll hold the protons together quite well. Uh, but if you've got too many, uh, so imagine if you've got too much glue, you've now got this substance that's not going to uh, work particularly effectively. Likewise, if you don't have enough glue, then you're not going to be able to keep them together either. So too many or too few neutrons means that um, we're not going to have a, a good balance between the electrostatic repulsion and the strong nuclear force. So that's going to mean that the nucleus will be unstable. What we mean by unstable um, is just that it um, it's not uh, the the component parts aren't able to keep it totally bound together, um, so it's unstable and it's going to uh, uh, not not really stick together all that well. Now, if we're looking at this idea of too few or too ma uh, too many or too few, sorry, left a word out there. Um, we can then sort of look across all of the um, the elements and identify which ones are going to be stable. Now, we could go through and look at um, a few resources to identify all the, the numbers of stable and unstable, what their um, uh, neutron numbers and atomic numbers are, but um, just as a quick representation, that shows all of the stable uh, nuclides. Now, that word nuclide basically is just um, refers to a specific uh, nucleus. So if we're looking in these sorts of situations, we might be talking about, say, this nuclide here. Um, so the term nuclide, sometimes interchanged with the word isotope, so but they do actually have slightly different meanings. Um, so you can see there that um, as we increase the atomic number, the neutron number also has to increase. And that kind of makes sense. If you've got more protons, uh, then you need to space out those protons a bit more, so you need more neutrons. Uh, another point to note here as well, though, is that um, it's not just a, a straight one-to-one -one relationship here. So if we were to take a line and draw uh, where the one-to-one -one relationship is, so for every one proton, if there was one neutron, we'd get that line there. So you can see that the stable nuclides actually sit, uh, generally speaking, above that line, with the exception of sort of the ones that are with atomic numbers of less than about 20. Um, they're generally sort of in that one-to-one -one ratio. But as we get above uh, 20, you can see that we need more and more pro uh, more and more neutrons in order to keep the nucleus stable. Uh, so that's um, something that we'll um, start to look at in terms of uh, what's going to happen when they're not stable. Um, so we'll just make a note briefly there. And so to become stable, a nuclide will either emit um, either mass or energy. In some cases, both mass and energy. And in the next video, we'll actually have a look at um, what different types of uh, radioactive decay there are uh, based on this idea of emitting matter, uh, mass or energy.